Good morning, great men. How are you today? I hope you're all doing fine and feeling wonderful. I am Ma Maylin of Malinta National High School, your live streaming teacher for today. Have you ever wondered why our body releases sweat when it is hot and shivers and feeling wonderful? I am Ma Maylin. The human body is made up high school different systems that coordinate with one another in order to maintain balance and stable condition necessary for survival. This is known as homeostasis. In today's discussion, we will focus on how the nervous system coordinates and regulates a feedback mechanism to maintain homeostasis. Specifically, we are going to discuss the following objectives. Number one, describe the divisions and subdivisions of nervous system. Number two, distinguish the major functions of the nervous system, sensation, integration, and response. And last, describe how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanisms to maintain homeostasis. So, are you ready to learn how our body maintains homeostasis? Great! So, let's go! The nervous system and the endocrine plays an important role in maintaining body homeostasis. To understand how our body maintains balance, let us first discuss how the nervous system works. The nervous system connects all your body parts and transmits signals from one part to another. It is a system of cells, tissues, and organs that regulates the body's responses to internal and external stimuli. The nervous system is divided into two major parts. These are the central nervous system or CNS and the peripheral nervous system or PNS. The central nervous system or CNS serves as the main processing center of the entire nervous system. CNS is consisting of two main components, namely the brain, which functions as the organizer and distributor of information in the body, and the spinal cord, which serves as the channel for signals between the brain and the rest of the body. Did you know that the spinal cord controls musculoskeletal reflexes without input from the brain? An example to this is when you accidentally touch a hot object. Your immediate or instant reaction is to withdraw your hand. This reflex action is an involuntary and nearly instantaneous response to stimulus. The second part of nervous system is the peripheral nervous system or the the PNS connects the central nervous system to the organs and leaves, and it has two main divisions. The somatic nervous system. This system is associated with the voluntary control of the body movement. And the autonomic nervous system that is associated with the involuntary movement of the body. The nervous system has three main functions. Sensory function, or sensation, integration, and response. The sensory function of the nervous system registers the presence of a stimulus. A stimulus is a detectable change in the physical or chemical structure of an organism's internal or external environment. Example of an external stimulus are temperature of the environment and the presence of danger, while an example of internal stimuli is lack of water and food in the body. The stimulus will be received by the receptor of the body. Sensory neurons are nerve cells that are activated by sensory information from the environment. These sensory neurons collect stimuli received by receptors throughout the body, including the skin, 
eyes, ears, nose, tongue, as well as pain and other receptors in the internal organs. The sensory information will now travel towards the central nervous system. When the sensory information reaches the central nervous system, integration process will occur. The information is compared with or integrated with other stimuli, memories of previous stimuli, or the state of a person at a particular time. This leads to the specific response that will be generated. The nervous system produces a response in effector organs such as muscle, glands, or due to muscles or glands due to the sensory stimuli. The motor branch of the PNS carries the signals away from the CNS to the specific parts of the body. Now, let's take a look at this thing. Let's analyze the situation and identify the stimulus and response. I'll be giving you five seconds. All right, time is up. Let us now analyze the picture. The picture shows a girl covering her nose. What do you think is the stimulus in the given situation? You are correct. The stimulus is the stinky smell of the garbage. The stimulus was received by the sensory receptors in the nose and traveled to the CNS. The brain processed the information and produced a response. And what response was given by the brain? You are correct. The response directed the girl to cover her nose. Great job, learners. Remember, the nervous system is the major controlling, regulatory, and communicating system in the body. It is the center of all mental activity, including thought, learning, and memory. The nervous system also works with the endocrine system to maintain homeostasis. To achieve homeostasis, the nervous system and endocrine system maintain a normal range of the following variables. Body temperature, amount of water in the body, amount of metabolic waste in the cell, blood calcium level, and hormones in the blood. Our body system maintains homeostasis by using feedback mechanisms. Maintenance of homeostasis usually involves feedback mechanisms. This mechanism acts to oppose the stimulus. So how does feedback mechanism work? A healthy internal body temperature falls within an average of 37 degrees, and our body has some flexibility with temperature. However, if you get to extremes of body temperature, it can affect your body's ability to function. For example, if your body temperature falls to 34 degrees Celsius or lower, you will have hypothermia. This condition can potentially lead to cardiac arrest, brain damage, or even death. If your body temperature rises to as high as 42 degrees Celsius, you can suffer with brain damage and death. When your internal temperature changes, Sensors in your central nervous system send messages to your hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a section of your brain that controls internal temperature. Hypothalamus sends signals to various organs and systems in your body. If your body needs to cool down, our body sweats. Sweating is a bodily function that helps regulate your body temperature. Your sweat glands release sweat, which cools your skin as it evaporates. This helps to lower your internal temperature. 
Next is vasodilation. The blood vessel under your skin gets wider. This increases blood flow to your skin where it is cooler away from your warm inner body. This lets your body release heat through heat radiation. If your body needs to warm up, this mechanism is used. Next is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction uh, works when the blood vessels under your skin becomes narrower. This decreases blood flow to your skin, retaining heat near the warm inner body. And we have thermogenesis. In thermogenesis, your body's muscles, organs, and brain produce heat in a variety of ways. For example, muscles can produce heat by shivering. Another example of negative feedback has to do with blood glucose level. When glucose level or sugar level in the blood are too high, the pancreas secretes insulin to stimulate the absorption of glucose and the conversion of glucose into glycogen, which is stored in the liver. As blood glucose levels decrease, less insulin is produced. When glucose levels are too low, another hormone called glucagon is produced, which causes the liver to convert glycogen back to glucose. Homeostasis depends on feedback mechanisms, so anything that interferes with the feedback mechanisms can disrupt homeostasis in the case of human body, this may, uh, this may lead to disease. An example is diabetes. Um, the diabetes is a disease caused by a broken feedback mechanism involving the hormone insulin. The broken feedback mechanism makes it difficult or impossible for the body to bring high blood sugar down to a healthy level. At this point, Let's have a short activity. The activity is entitled Complete Me. In this activity, you are going to analyze and complete the diagram of feedback mechanism by choosing the correct word or words. Write your answer on your notebook. You will be given 15 seconds to answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. Nervous system and endocrine system. 
failed to maintain homeostasis. Well, a failure of homeostasis, the balance of essential physiological states, can mean disaster for an organism. If your body temperature falls too low or goes too high, you might experience hypothermia or heat stroke, which can both be life-threatening. If you can't maintain its energy balance, you might develop obesity or diabetes. And if water balance becomes a problem, you might become dehydrated or hyperhydrated. Both are very dangerous when extreme. Now let's have question number two. How does the brain receive information from the sensory receptor? Remember, the sensory receptors receive the stimuli, then it changes its electrical signal or electrical impulse. The electrical impulse travels from one neuron to another until it reaches the brain. Now let's have question number three. Do animals also maintain body homeostasis? This? The answer is yes. Did you know that many of our pets' behaviors are meant to maintain homeostasis? Example, when your dog hangs its tongue out and pants, it helps them to cool down. And when a dog pants, moisture is created by their breath, which evaporates and cools their tongue, which cools their, body, their blood and thereby cooling their entire body. Alright, I hope I have answered your questions enough to make your understanding of the lesson better. And for those questions that were not chosen, it will be gladly entertained by your subject teachers in the follow-up discussion tomorrow. So have you learned something today? If yes, kindly hit the heart react. Thank you again, grade 10. This is Mam Mylene. See you next.